is Jekinori Jr. Hello, I'm Amanda. This story is set in a pirate school where Smudge, Flo, Ziggy and Corkella are learning to be pirates. It's called the Bun Gun. <laughs> chomp, chomp, slurp, slurp. It was lunchtime at pirate school and the teachers were in the head teacher's cabin eating. Mrs Mugwump was chomping a jammy donut. Miss Fishgrip and Mad Maggot were slurping champagne. Miss Snitty, the secretary, was eating a lettuce leaf. She was on a diet. But the noisiest eater was the head teacher, Patagonia Clatterbottom. She sat in her boat pram eating a great pile of food. Slip, slurp. So, what were the children eating? Ziggy was eating a single baked bean. Corkella was eating a baked bean. Smudge and Flo were each eating a baked bean. Even Jazz the dog was eating a baked bean. It was a very small lunch. I'm hungry, moaned Ziggy. We're all hungry, grumbled Corkella. Smudge peered through the keyhole into Patagonia's cabin. Ah, oh, they're drinking champagne, he cried. Little Flo peered through the keyhole. Have you seen their food store? It's wonderful, she sighed. Patagonia's cupboard was bursting with yummy, scrummy food. Ziggy banged on the door. What do you want? roared Patagonia. You are a little prawn. We want food like yours, said Ziggy very bravely. Ha! No chance, bellowed Patagonia Clatterbottom. This is for staff only. Get back to your baked bean and don't eat it all at once. The children were not the only ones who knew about the food. Boris Big Belly and Fee Fee Fo Fum were grown up pirates, but they didn't steal treasure, they stole food. And their gang was called the Whopper Gobs. Boris and Fee Fee had been watching Patagonia Clatterbottom doing her shopping. They knew she was the head teacher of pirate school, but they didn't know where she kept all the food she was loading into her boat pram. I shall find out, said Fee Fee Fo Fum. I shall have an accident on purpose. Crash! <laughs> I'm so sorry, cried Fee Fee. Uh, let me help you. Oh, what a lot of food you have. Your children must eat an awful lot. Nonsense, roared Patagonia Clatterbottom. This is for staff only. I lock it away in my top secret food store. Otherwise, the children would eat it before you could say strawberry ice cream with chocolate chips and gravy. <laughs> Fifi hurried back to Boris. That potty Patagonia likes gravy on her ice cream, but guess what? I know where she keeps the food. Boris grinned. Excellent. We'll meet the gang at our secret cave and make a plan. When it's dark, we shall creep up to their ship, said Boris. Creep, 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 went Lily. Why did you say that? asked Boris. I'm doing sound effects, Lily explained. And then we tiptoe to Patagonia's cabin. Tippy, tippy, tippy too, said Lily. Boris rolled his eyes and then we burst in. <laughs> Rah! All the pirates fell off their chairs. Was that another sound effect? demanded Boris crossly. Yes, and very effective it was too, said Lily. Boris picked himself up from the floor. Just make sure you follow the plan, he snarled. We burst in, smash open the cupboard and snatch all the food. And then we eat it, said Fifi. Exactly. Chomp, chomp, chomp. Jumping jellyfish. Now you've got me doing it, Lily. Back at pirate school, Smudge had come up with a plan to get the food too. We stand by the door and shout, fire, fire. The teachers will rush out and I shall slip inside and raid the food cupboard. What do you think? Little Flo was amazed. <laughs> you are clever, she told him, and they both blushed. Good plan, agreed Corkella. Might just work. Woof, 
went Jazz. So they stood outside the head teacher's door and yelled, Fire! Fire! Bellowed Mad Maggot, charging out of the cabin. Fire! Squeaked Miss Snitty before she was mown down by Mrs Mugwump and Miss Fishgrip as they made their escape. Fire! Oh, oh, you help! Went Patagonia Clatterbottom as she tripped over Miss Snitty and went tumbling along the passage. Smudge dashed into the empty cabin and raced to the top secret food store. He pulled out buns and donuts galore. Then he made a dash for safety, straight into Patagonia Clatterbottom, who was struggling up from the floor. What's this? Hey, piddly piffling pirate being piratical in my pantry. Throw him in the old, cried the head teacher. As Smudge was dragged away, Ziggy reached out and stuffed something down the back of Smudge's trousers. Oh, said Smudge, very surprised. Shh, whispered Ziggy with a wink. Mrs Mugwump opened the hatch and Miss Fishgrip dropped Smudge inside. Bang! The hatch was shut tight. It was so dark in the hold that Smudge couldn't see a thing. He felt inside his trousers. What had Ziggy put in there? A torch! Clever Ziggy! There wasn't much in the hold at all. He found a few old tools and a table. He met several friendly rats too but he couldn't find any way out. Smudge sat down and wondered what to do next. And that was when he heard muffled voices from above. Smudge listened carefully. He heard someone say, get the gangplank ready. Tomorrow we shall make that wretched child walk the plank. Smudge was very scared when he heard this, but he realized he was right beneath Patagonia's cabin. And that gave him another idea. An even better one. Boris Big Belly stood at the back of the little rowing boat. This has got to be a big surprise. We mustn't wake up anyone on board, so don't splash. Splish, splish, whispered Lily. I said no splashing, hissed Boris. I wasn't. I was splishing, said Lily. And that's a lot quieter. The rowing boat rocked gently up against pirate school. All was quiet, except for Patagonia snoring. The Whoppergobs threw ropes onto the deck and then they climbed up them. Tippy tippy doo, click, went Lily as they crept across the deck. Be quiet, muttered Boris. I'm pretending there was a loose plank. It makes it more exciting. No more sound effects. Right. This is Patagonia's cabin. Get ready, on the count of three, okay? One, two, three, charge! Uproar. The teachers woke with a start and hurried to Patagonia's cabin. Ow! Get off! No, take that! No, you take that! No. Ow! <laughs> In a few moments, the Whoppergobs had won the fight. <laughs> now we're going to steal all your food, sniggered Fifi Fofum. You'll never get away with it, growled Patagonia. I think we will, sneered Boris, opening up the top secret food store. Miss Snitty peeped into the cabin. Oh, what a pickle the pirates were in. Oh, yummy yums, chorused the Whoppergobs, staring at the gorgeous pile of food. And then, just as Boris Big Belly reached in to grab it all, whoosh, the food vanished right in front of their eyes. Down in the hold, Smudge had been working on his clever plan. He had found a little saw and made a hole right beneath the food cupboard. Smudge heard the fight but had no idea what was going on. Then, just as the pirates tried to grab the food, Smudge finished the hole and the food fell straight down into the hold. That little kid's nicked our food, cried Fifi, staring down the hole. It's our food, snarled Patagonia. <laughs> sobbed Lily. Is that another sound effect? frowned Boris. No, I'm upset. Our food's gone. <laughs> I'm going to get it back, declared Boris, and he jumped down the hole. Of course, he was far too fat and he got stuck like a cork in a bottle. Help! he squeaked. Fifi Fofum pulled and pulled. 
Lily Lollop grabbed Fifi and Two Tooth Charlie pulled on Lily, but it was no good. Boris was well and truly stuck. All that banging and crashing had woken up the children. Miss Snitty tiptoed to their room. I don't know what to do, she wailed. Don't worry, said Corkella, holding her hand. We do. We're pirates. They crept down the passage and found everyone in Patagonia's cabin, with Big Belly stuck in the hole. They quickly shut the door. Now the Whoppergobs were their prisoners, and so were all the teachers. Bang, bang, bang! The prisoners were not at all happy. But the children had gone off to rescue Smudge from the hold. I'm not coming out, he grinned. You've got to come in. Surprise, cried Smudge, showing them all the food. And they sat down and began to eat. There were eight very cross pirates locked in Patagonia Clatterbottom's cabin. Fifi Fofum tried to escape through the window, but she got stuck too. All you could see was her big wobbly bottom and her little legs kicking. So that was where the pirates stayed for the rest of the night. In the morning, the children returned to Patagonia's cabin. Three of them had swords, but Ziggy was pulling a small cannon and holding a bulging sack. We will let you out, Corkella called through the keyhole, but don't dare try anything. You are all going to walk the plank. They opened the door. Out came Two Tooth Charlie and Lily Lollop. Out came Patagonia and the teachers. That left the two fattest pirates stuck inside. I know how to get Fifi out of the window, said Little Flo. She got a pin and stuck it in Fifi's bottom. Ah! <laughs> I think we'll have to leave Boris until he's thinner, said Smudge. Now then, you podgy pirates, get up on that gangplank. And it wasn't long before Lily Lollop and Two Tooth Charlie joined Fifi in the water, swimming round and round. Ziggy grinned at Patagonia and the teachers. We shall only let you go if you promise to give us better food from now on, he said. Scuttle my grommets, never, cried Patagonia. In that case, I shall have to shoot you with my special cannon. <gasps> you wouldn't dare, said Patagonia fiercely. <laughs> oh, yes, I would, laughed Ziggy, taking aim. This is my bun gun. Boiled barnacles, there's no such thing as a bun gun, scowled the head teacher. Yes, there is. It fires buns, Ziggy explained. Bang! Wobbling whelks, look at the mess you've made, you horrible shrimp. Give us proper food from now on, Corkella repeated severely. Never, cried Patagonia. Bang! Now he's got all of us, complained Miss Fishgrip. For pity's sake, give in. Never, roared Patagonia yet again. Load up the special ammunition, ordered Ziggy. Special ammunition? Jam donuts! Bang! Splodge! What a horribly messy looking bunch of pirates, said Corkella. I think they need a bath, don't you? Yes, yelled the others. Put them on the gangplank! So Patagonia and the teachers joined the other pirates in the sea. Jazz jumped in too, but that was because he liked getting wet. As for the Whoppergobs, they had to swim to their rowing boat and go away with nothing. The children celebrated all day. How about a nice jam donut? asked Smudge. Oh, I never want to see a jam donut again, growled Patagonia Clatterbottom. Chomp, chomp, chomp. Glug, glug, glug. Was that a sound effect? No, it was real. Bye for now. Piggles and Ponty Pines. Ha hoo, ha hoo, ha hoo. Hacka wacka, macka packa. Upsy daisy doo. <laughs> Pinky Ponk and Ninky Nonk, Micka Macka Moo. For in the night garden, adventures wait for you. Every day at 6 20 on CBeebies. <laughs> <laughs> Watch me, Sid, watch me! Go, 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 go. Okay, pass it on, pass it on. Woo! Woohoo! Yeah!
Zero robots. Not bad. Robot. So